Hi, I'm Michael Whitehouse of Summit Guy. I run summits that don't suck. And people often ask me, should I charge my speakers if I'm running a summit? My answer is no, pretty much across the board. The exception would be for sponsorships. Now, this is the person who's paying you more to get their name on the banner or for the right to pitch or for some kind of major benefit. That's a different thing. But just for the rank and file speakers, you're having a 30 speaker event, should you be charging all of them? And I think the answer is no because it's going to make your event worse and it's going to get you less promotions. Well, that sounds counterintuitive. So how does that work? Well, there's two ways you charge. One is you charge a fee, a flat fee they don't get back, and the other is you charge a deposit. Now for either of these, you're going to exclude certain people that you want at your event. There is a speaker who's been on my stage a number of times and phenomenal speaker, he speaks on a different thing every time, and he's equally proficient, amazing. People pay this guy 10, I think $20,000 for a single keynote, and he's coming on my summit stages. Now, obviously I don't pay him, it's a summit. In fact, he promotes to be on there. It's a summit, that's how summits work. But if I were to charge even $50, he wouldn't be on my stage, because this guy commands numbers with commas in them to speak. He's not gonna pay me to speak at my summit. That wouldn't make any sense. So I'd be excluding those kinds of great speakers. Now, who does pay to speak on a summit stage? Two kinds of people. People desperate to get on stages and people who know they can monetize. Those sound like the audience you necessarily want. Now, if you're doing a summit on monetizing from the stage, okay, you probably do want those people. But the first group, these are people, they'll take any stage they can get and they're willing to throw money at it. These may not be the people you want, especially because they're probably a little bit desperate. So they're gonna be trying to figure out how can I get this money back? I just spent money I don't have to get on the stage. What can I do? And they're gonna to try to be finding some way to pull the value back from the event. And the people who know how to monetize, there's some who are phenomenal and have integrity and authenticity and they're amazing. I'm not talking about them because they are rare because the main ones I tend to see are the ones who know how to monetize because every waking breath is thinking about monetization. They get out of bed and they're thinking, how can I monetize, monetize, monetize? Oh, I should provide some value also. Well, the people I want on my stage and the people you should probably want on your stage are people who wake up and say, who can I impact today? Whose life can I change today? How can I change the world today? And then once I'm doing that, how can I get paid for that? That's who you want on your stage. So, because I've seen these speakers, the ones who know how to monetize, and they get on, they got on your stage, my stage, some stage, and they share a half answer. They're like, so you just need to do A and B, and then, oh, I don't have enough time to go into everything, come to my webinar to get the rest of it. Cool, I get that, right? My summits are 15 minute slots, can't teach the whole story, gotta bring them to another event. But, you go to their webinar and it's not there either. They're not teaching you. They're like, so I have a A, B, C, D, and E, and they are amazing. And then here's some testimonials, and here's how you're gonna make your decision. Here's, I went to one of these things, 90 minutes. There was 75 minutes in, I finally gave up on him. I didn't even know what he was charging, but I certainly didn't know what the, what the, the system was, the process. I wasn't even clear on what I'd be learning to do if I did buy his thing. He was just like doing some NLP stuff to sell us because all he did was sell from beginning to end. That's the kind of person who says 300 bucks, boom, no problem. I'm t happy to be in because I know I can make that back because they're going to monetize your audience. Not serve, just monetize. So you're going to be attracting people who are focused on monetization. You're going to be repelling people who are high value big people, and also, unless, you're ta unless your summit is about how to make money, you want people who know their craft. If your summit is about health and wellness, you want people who can teach people how to lose weight and detoxify and eat better food and you know exercise in their schedule and whatever, whatever the value is. Well, these people may be really great at aligning with the universe or eliminating the, the ketos or whatever, but they may not know how to make money, which means when they see 300 bucks to speak, they're gonna be like, whew, don't have that, sorry. I get those people on my stage though, because I don't charge them. Now here's the thing. They may not have a big list. They may not have 100,000 people, but I invite them to my stage. My stage is highly interactive. It's a community. They meet the other speakers ahead of time. They're gonna go to their friends. Some of my best promoters don't have lists. No list or a list of a couple hundred people because they see the event, they're excited about it and they're messaging their friends, private messaging. Hey, Bob, I'm in this event. You should really come. It's gonna be amazing. 
that's who you want showing up to your event because that's a real live person who's excited to be there because they're attached to someone, not someone who opted into a big list or a giveaway and now they're clicking and everything else. That person, the person who brings those people, can't afford the fee to come to a summit because they don't know how to monetize. But unless the monetization summit, it shouldn't make a difference. So there's, those are a couple of the reasons why I don't charge and you probably shouldn't either. The other thing is some people talk about deposits. Well, I want them to be bought in, okay? So whether I, it's a deposit or not, if I give you money, I'm thinking reciprocity is completed. You're giving me a stage, I'm giving you cash. We're done, thanks. Normally a summit is stage for promotion. That's your reciprocity right there. Well, if I've already paid you money for stage for promotion, well, I'm seeing more hands going this way than are going this way. You see, we're bad at math as humans. So it doesn't matter if you promote you bring in five people or 500 people, you still think you promoted. I discovered this years ago when I was a, a sponsorship coordinator for an event. And I realized I could sell the same person three different sponsorships as long as I asked them at three different times. Because when they paid, that was past them, right? October Bob paid. Then I asked December Bob. Well, December Bob said, oh, that sounds interesting. Yeah. December Bob paid. I asked February Bob. Oh yeah, that sounds interesting. Sure. Because the pain of paying is in the past. This is what happens with the deposit. You paid it in the past. So either it's in the past, you already paid it, whatever, if I get it, whatever. Now you're doing the calculus, is $200 worth promoting or not? Or you're broke now and you need that $200 and you're thinking that freaking son of a bitch summit host, they've got my money and I need it back. And no matter how much I promote, I'm not getting it back until after their event. And I need it now. Well, I'm present me. I don't need it in the future. So if I'm gonna promote, I'm gonna promote my program because I need some cash in my pocket. Either way, deposit's not gonna make people promote, but it is gonna make them feel like they already paid. So why should they pay again by promoting, right? So that's another reason why it doesn't do that. Now here's another thing. I heard this summit model, 30 speakers, $300 per speaker, and it's non-refundable, but 30 speakers and it's and some of that money is going to go to Facebook ads or whatever. So we're going to get a lot of opt-ins. You're going to get a lot of miles. Totally worth it. Very valuable. Blah, blah, blah. And I said, oh, that's $9,000 for any of Summit for anyone shows up. That's pretty cool. And you know people sign up for those all day long because they do. I could just go out and print $9,000 $9, bills. Checks. I don't know. I could just go get money. But I'm not going to do it because I refuse to sell something that I can't guarantee value on. And this is the main reason, the primary reason, why you should not charge your speakers because you can't be sure they'll get value. Some of my speakers get amazing value. They've gotten $10,000 clients. They've gotten all kinds of amazing things. And others have had a pretty good time and met some nice people. I don't know who's gonna be who. It's luck of the draw. It's who happens to be in the room at the time. I don't know how many people are gonna watch their, you know, watch their talk, how many people are gonna watch the recording. If it's a pre-recorded summit, you definitely don't know how many people are gonna watch and how many people are gonna engage. So you don't know if you can deliver that value. And it is unethical to sell a product if you can't guarantee the value you're selling. Now, when I run summits, the value I promise is leads, right? It's gonna be people in the room, it's gonna be people on the email list, it's gonna be JV partners. But I can guarantee that. And I can tell if they don't get it, and I can run another summit for them to make sure they do get it. For speakers, the exposure is a bit more ineffable and it's a little harder to say, I guarantee you'll get $300 in value. How do you know? I don't know. So could I go out and make a summit that makes me 9,000 bucks and gets my speakers something? I don't know. Yeah, I totally could. Am I going to? No, because it would be wrong. Now I'm going to share one more thing because there's one friend of mine who charges an application fee uh, and I've been recommending people to go, go see her. Why? Because it is absolutely 100% worth 50 bucks to have a conversation with this person. All right? I wouldn't say you should ever pay to be on a summit, but there's some people you should pay to talk to who are totally worth paying to talk to. So that's another thing. If you're an amazing coach who delivers amazing value in every conversation you have, and I've only met something like five people who meet this description, but if you're that, okay. You're charging for the conversation, but you're still not charging to be on the summit. You're charging to have a conversation. You're charging for your time to interview them before you have them on the summit. So benefits to charging, you get some money, I guess, but all the other benefits, making people bought in, incentivizing them to promote, um, you know, filtering out the riffraff, all that, 
doesn't actually work that way. So should you charge for your summits? Should you charge should you charge your speakers for your summits? No. No, you shouldn't. I'm Michael Whitehouse. I am the summit guy. I run summits that don't suck. Now, if you run summits, awesome. You know, follow my follow my stuff. I'll give you some good content. If you run summits, say, oh my God, summits are so hard. I hate running them. You can hire me. I'll do it for you. My done for you program is actually done for you. You make clear to me what kind of event you want, and then you show up. That's it. Nothing in between. You don't find your own speakers. You don't write your own copy. Nothing. I take care of everything. So if you want to know more about that, there's a link down below. If you can't find that link, go to summits.fun because all summits should be .fun and you can get on a call with me. I'm Michael Whitehouse, Summit Guy, and I run summits that don't suck.